How's it going guys? Welcome to the FM Dugout. We're back with Rescue Rangers and today's episode sees us take on Celtic in a double header, first in the Scottish Cup quarterfinal and then in the league, both taking place at Celtic Park. Now given the fact Rangers this season have lost both encounters with Celtic, today is going to be a tall order to get through to the semi-final of the Scottish Cup. However, we have been under a good run of form. Uh, every game since I've taken over has been a win for us. Um, the new formation seems to have bedded in a bit now and it's given us quite a bit of stability at the back um, and we seem to have a decent partnership now between uh, Waghorn and Garner. So things are going quite well. Um, if we take a look at the league table now, we've managed to pull back to only 12 points behind Hearts now. Our goal difference is sitting at plus 11, which was minus one when I first took over. Um, so I think from that point of view, second place might be a reality. Um, 33 points still to go and only 12 behind. I think we play Hearts once more before the split. Let's take a look. Um, no, we don't. We don't play Hearts before the split. So we've only got one more game against Hearts, really. So it's still going to be a challenge to finish second, but we are third and we're six points clear of Aberdeen now. So as far as the league is concerned, things are going quite well. Um, a few transfer things to talk about. Harry Forrester um, complained about not getting game time. I listed him and uh, subsequently Leeds came in with a 450k bid and I negotiated to have... Uh, an add-on, I think it was 10% <clears throat> of the next sale, and uh, Harry Forrester agreed, so he'll be joining Leeds on the 1st of July this year. Um, a little bit disappointed, uh, he's a good player technically, um, but as for me, the, our formation just doesn't suit where he, he wants to play out in the left wing. I still think he should really be an attacking midfielder central. Um, anyway, that's that's where he is just not going to get game time um, and it's better to, to sell him than have him unhappy. Similarly, um, Josh Windass is on his way out. Um, he hasn't had any bids for him yet, but I have transfer listed him. Just don't really see him developing into the kind of player that I want him to be. Um, you know, I, I want Rangers to progress into Europe and then to do better in Europe. And I just don't feel that Josh Windass in the next seven years is going to become the sort of player who is going to give us um, that kind of cutting edge in European matches. Um, I, I just couldn't see him lining up in a Champions League game um, as, as far as his stats are here. If he had these sort of stats while he was 17 or something, then yes, absolutely. I'd, I'd be keeping him on and giving him a chance. Um Nobody yet has come in with a bid for him, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, also on the sort of transfer front, I have offered Rob Kiernan a new contract. Uh, he has managed to improve his performances of late. Um, you can see from his uh, last five form, apart from a, a slight blip uh, there, he's been playing consistently sort of seven and above. Uh, so I've decided to give him a contract where I've reduced his you know, committed wages and given him um, appearance-based bonus. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. I'm hoping that you know, he can still be around the squad and, and be there as a, a decent backup. You're not 26 years old. It's not a bad age to be um, for that. Uh, if he can get capped for Ireland, maybe his value will <laughs> increase. And... Um, Obviously, that's low because his contract's expiring. But uh, if his value increases, then maybe we can sell him on um, and then get some money back for him. But if we look at the squad as a whole here, um, you can see that things have taken a, a really good turn um, under this new formation. It seems that the squad is now rejuvenated. We've now got a number of players over seven in terms of their average rating, which we just weren't seeing before. Um, everyone was kind of quite low down in the sort of 6.7 kind of mark um, and it's still pulling a few people's averages down like Martin Waghorn at 6.95 whereas um, if you look at the last five games 7.66 for Waghorn um, he's really done well um, in this uh, front pairing with Garner and certainly with the, the wing backs uh, Tavernier and Wallace we're now actually seeing 
um, the number of assists increasing there as well. Nine assists for Wallace. Absolutely fantastic performances from him on the left wing. Um, and seven from Tavernier as well is not to be scoffed at either. So seem to be fitting in quite well with the, the new formation. Um, I have changed things around a little bit. Um, he's not supposed to be up there. Um, so we've now actually gone to this formation here. Um, with the two flat threes, the wing backs, you know, it's a classic 5 3 2 wing back. Um, I had Billing, um, well, it wasn't Billing, I had Mackay here, um, it just wasn't working out for us. And in the Motherwell game, actually, I tried to play this formation here, which did actually work against them, although the 3 0 kind of flattered us a little bit. Uh, the Hearts game, I kind of started with this formation and then, um, in mind and and just decided to to go back to what we had and then obviously it's kind of found its way to this formation over the course of the the last eight or so games and i think this is probably where i want to be um potentially i might have the the number 10 role once the two central midfielders become you know really sort of top quality 10 million kind of bracket uh, midfielders Rossiter is getting there you can see that his skills are on the up um, Billing and Hansen obviously are, are loan deals so they'll be on their way out um, I have been given some time uh, some game time to Liam Burt he has played fairly well in them um, unfortunately not really seen a great deal of improvement with his stats only his acceleration improving there um, but we'll keep an eye on it and see how it goes uh, Ryan Hardy has, has got himself uh, into the squad a few times scored a couple of goals but his stats are decreasing um, and I think Zach Rudden as well got a goal against Motherwell and he's come off the bench and you can see his stats are, are improving as a result um, so yeah things are going fairly well at the moment but today it's all about the Scottish Cup and whether we can get ourselves into the semi-final uh, by beating Celtic for the first time this season. They say this is our favoured formation, and I would say it's, it's probably my favoured starting 11. Um, I don't think there's anyone who's unavailable now, even Jason Holt's coming back from injury. So, yeah, let's uh, let's get on with today's game then, guys, and see whether or not we can, uh, we can take Celtic. Um, let's see what we got here anything to kind of call out well you can see our form has been rather good um, in terms of who's through at the moment Aberdeen and Ross County putting out hearts um, and potentially Livingston might put Dundee out who knows so obviously I think this is this is going to be the biggest hurdle if we can put Celtic out then um, we should give ourselves a good chance Celtic um, actually that's probably one thing I want to call out before we get into today's game um, I just want to, to have a look at Celtic's uh, transfer dealings because I know there will be some Celtic fans watching this and um, nope, that's not the right one and uh, if we have a look at their history you can see they have made 27 million um, in transfer fees uh, I think the game's gone a bit crazy here. Moussa Dembele going to AC Milan for 12 million. Now, that you consider this, he's scored 11 goals in 17 games in the Scottish Premier League and he's got himself a move like that to AC Milan. It just doesn't seem quite right. Um, Kieran Tierney has gone to Liverpool for 6 million. Uh, Christopher Ager has gone to Real Madrid. Um, and they've also sold Gamboa as well. So it meant that with that money, they've managed to bring in um, a number of players um, for you know sizable kind of funds. Not really any names that are kind of uh, leaping out at me that I, I kind of know. Obviously, Lucas Pison um, at Chelsea is only in on loan. Um, yeah, decent sort of players, I guess. Um, Versa looks like a, a decent central midfielder, so they're definitely going to give us a challenge today. Um, they're lining up with the 4 2, well, sorry, the 4 3 3, but with a defensive midfielder, so um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But let's get on into it and see whether we can put them out of the Scottish Cup. Obviously, this game is 
much more important in terms of keeping our form going, uh, although the board do expect us to get to the semi-final. Um, <clears throat> so the pundits are going with us at the moment. Ah, tremendous occasion. I uh, don't care about them. So in terms of opposition instructions today, I would like to see the two central midfielders always closed down always and hard so basically want to crunch the central midfield close them down give them no time in the ball um, and basically hack them I think is what we're looking to do uh, out wide show them onto the weaker foot um, tight marking for the striker and weaker foot as well so I think that will probably do for the opposition instructions um, right we want to say where's the avenge one that's the one there that usually gets the the positive kind of response from the squad only three people not reacting oh, it's not too bad at all all right let's get the show on the road and um i just realized i probably have everything set for the highlights here um i do <laughs> not exactly professional here so let's pause the game and sort out all these things before we get on with this game so we'll go to director uh, we'll get Rangers team ratings we'll get uh, match stats and where's Celtic formation just want to keep an eye on that to see whether or not they, they change things around not a great start there from Tavernier letting Mackay Steven in uh, but we want it back and now look to, to keep possession. So I think this game today is going to just be quite a, a close encounter. Um, if we're going to win, it's going to be by the odd goal. We're not a team that just steamroll our opposition. Celtic getting a free kick here. Christie whipping it into the box. And Rob Kiernan gives a fill. I might withdraw my contract offer. That is far from ideal. Um... Really didn't need any mistakes in a game like this. And surely Lee Griffiths will bury this. And we'll find ourselves 1-0 down after 28 minutes of play. Can Fotheringham save? He does! The left hand down low. Poor penalty. I mean, if one hand can stop that like that, um, really not a good penalty. But we have got out of jail with that one, boys. That was a stroke of luck. Now, Tavernier with the deep cross in and Celtic are now going to come away with this Christie breaking through the middle three players around him he's gone for goal from way out a uh, bit of a rash one there disappointed that we didn't actually get any kind of chance to speak of from that free kick I thought we were going to get something uh, <clears throat> Celtic having the better the first half must be said um, we've, we've had chances but obviously they're not good enough to show um, as Christie tries to work another chance here uh, Rogic Griffiths Holgate cuts it out Wilson could have gone for Wallace there but he's gone back to Fotheringham looking for Garner he's lost out in that roster Billing Hansen uh, Waghorn he's losing it to be honest I think Waghorn is not going to go much further than the Scottish Premiership as Griffiths gets into the box and Kieran with another penalty my goodness um, is he going to get himself sent off for that or is it going to be a yellow what are we going to get here anything the rest just walking way past them what's he going to do yellow card okay, a bit odd that he's given him a yellow card about 15 yards away from him now surely Celtic are going to score here right on the edge of half time Rodic with the penalty and he puts it into the bottom left corner and we are 1-0 down it's probably fair for the first half. Um, really haven't been playing. You can see Garner and Waghorn are really struggling <clears throat> up front. Just not getting the support they're looking for. Um, <clears throat> I think moving to anything different in the, in the middle of the park there is just going to give us problems. Um, I'm just going to say unlucky because I think there's definitely something in this game. Um, we'll see how it goes later on. Maybe Barry Mackay will get on. Midfield aren't really excelling, but as I say, if I take away the numbers there, 
um, it's just going to let Celtic's midfield three uh, run us over. So let's um, let's see if we can tell the, the players to kind of push forward. See if we can get something out of it. I will change it with maybe about twenty minutes to go and, and maybe kind of push for it. It is a cup game, so you know we only need to to take it to extra time really, um, or a replay to to kind of get a chance to go through. As Cornet breaks away, fathering with the save. I'm disappointed we've not really had any chances to speak of. I think I'm going to actually push to overload at the moment and keep with the same formation and to see if we can do anything different. Joe Garner's at 6.2. Um, I think what we'll actually do is pull Garner off. That's that's a really poor performance from him. Um, we'll go with Barry Mackay in behind Waghorn um, see if we can get a little bit more in, in the midfield and, and support Waghorn that way it's not really working for us um, in terms of our instructions we are going down the flanks maybe that's the problem uh, maybe if we, we take that away and, and try to kind of work it into the box a little bit maybe a little bit more direct um, we are still in overload which is obviously a risk when you start pushing for things um, now get aggressive and tell the boys to push forward this is a really dire uh, episode I think from, from our point of view in terms of clear cut chances we haven't had a single highlight to speak of um, Celtic have just dominated this game um, thanks to Rob Kiernan's two, two penalties uh, that he's given away that's just wasteful from Fotheringham. Um, I don't know where he was trying to aim that for. Celtic will surely get another chance here. Galaretta to Cornet, completely unmarked. Kiernan just not able to get anything from it. I mean, we've had a decent number of sh shots, but they must be from outside the box or something. Um, <clears throat> hey, we've got five minutes to go. Uh, we, we might as well kind of push for this a little bit more um, let's see we'll go to this kind of formation here and bring off billing for I don't think Liam Burt's going to really make a great deal of difference in this kind of game um, we'll try Josh Murphy and see what happens here it's really the last throw of the dice here uh, with, with just a few minutes left on the clock and we've got a chance here, Mackay with free kick from deep. It's going to get headed away, and Celtic are going to come away. And this could be it. Yeah, could be two 0 here. This is always the danger when you you take that kind of chance. Cornet just skipping over the challenge there from uh, Tavernier, Galaretta saved by Fotheringham, and it's put out for a corner. You go overload and you start pushing people forward. It's obviously going to leave you exposed at the back. But you know we have to we have to go for it. We have to try as Wilson heads it away Sinclair will pick it up back to Christie looking to play it back into the box another corner time is ticking down I suppose the bigger thing for me now is what we do in the league to to try and um, to get a win I, I mean to be honest you look at things it's pretty even um, a penalty has, has decided that although Celtic have had a number of chances more than ourselves uh, this will just be for full time here I'm sure Mackay giving them the ball away just not had a very good day I'm shocked Rob Kiernan has a 7.5 after giving away two penalties um, uh, no I really don't want to say that it's there we go I shouldn't be happy and it looks as though the squad are responding to that so Scottish Cup win is off the agenda for this season um, so we've underperformed as far as the board are concerned all right um, so we'll progress on to the following week and see how the second game goes on I'll have to think about how I can maybe change things around. Joe Garner's performance um, in particular concerned me in that game. The strikers just not getting much uh, support really I think so I'll be back in a second with the second game. 
Okay guys, we're back for the second game of today's episode. Celtic look as though they're going to line up with the same formation, and why wouldn't they? It seemed to work for them last time round. Um, Hearts have won their game yesterday, so it means that a win today will only restore the 12-point lead. Um, yeah, I mean, the league's gone. We're 20 points behind, um, 33 points to go. So this, this really is for pride and to keep pushing for second place. But we've had a bit of a setback, two setbacks in fact. Lee Wallace is suspended for today and we've also lost Jordan Rossiter for a couple of weeks with um, abdomen, abdominal strain. Yeah. So also had a couple of uh, people who I was looking to play, Matt Crooks um, instead of Rossiter's a like for like switch. But it turns out we played against, um, the, the under-20s played against the youth candidates a couple of days ago. So a few of the players are kind of tired from that, um, with Crooks being one of them. So I've opted for Burt there. Um, Billing will play as the ball-winning midfielder. I'm just wondering, no, Hansen's no better for that. So um, that's what we'll go with there. Up front, I kind of wanted to play Garner again. Um just because I think he, he, he's probably got the, the ability to score a goal if we can create chances. Zach Rudden, though, has been on a good run of form for the youth team, scoring lots of goals, so a little bit pacier. We'll see whether or not maybe that that will do something for us. Halliday comes in at left wing back. Um, he has played there before, so hoping maybe from an attacking point of view he'll do a little bit better. I mean, formation-wise, I kind of thought about changing things around, but anything that I do here, uh, putting an attacking midfielder, just means that we're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a defensive midfielder, which I think would be Brown. Um, so, again, still want to just retain more of the ball in the middle of the park. Um, again, I could bring a, a number 10 from here, leaves Waghorn a bit exposed. So, I think it's probably just going to be more around... Um, hitting the early crosses maybe rather than looking for overlap looking for the perfect opportunity we just want to get it into the box a bit quicker and see if we can get chances that way so we'll see how it goes let's let's get into the match and um, and see whether we can avenge the defeat from seven days ago I think I probably would have preferred to have won the Scottish Cup tie to be honest uh, with a chance of, of winning a trophy in this season Um you know, we now don't have anything really other than the league to compete for. Um, Martin Canning has been sacked. Um, right, so yeah, that's what we'll go with. Does look rather defensive, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> we may have to look at maybe going a little bit more direct. Um, all right, we'll just do the same again. Avenging, you don't seem as bothered this time. Um, don't want to lose any of the motivated traits in midfield, so we'll go and do individual. Yeah, they're not listening to me today. We've had enough of my patter. All right, so Celtic kick us off here. Sinclair getting the ball early on, as you'd expect. Verza, the new sign in the midfield, losing out to Burke. Good challenge there. Hanson way to Halliday over the top. Waghorn, could this be an early chance here? Waghorn whips it in. Rudden just in front of the ball there unfortunately a little bit more promising in terms of the, the start of the game Tavernier now whipping it in headed away by Kimpembe Hansen Waghorn wide to Halliday surely good pressure here early on Halliday whips it in and Herrera in with the save there uh, coincidentally Brendan Rogers had a go at me for playing a lot of domestic players saying I was holding back the game in this country um, he might be right, <laughs> we'll see, Sinclair, well there was a chance for Celtic there, um, luckily he didn't score from that, I'd say 10 minutes in, looking okay, um, number of shots though is a bit disappointing, despite that positive start in the first minute there, uh, Celtic seem to be the ones now on the ascendancy, um, no shots at goal in the first 25 minutes. It's not looking good, is it, guys? Um, Sinclair now into Griffiths, in the box, off the crossbar, Wilson away, living dangerously. And now Celtic have the majority of the possession. So I think 
we're going to have to do something formation wise here. It's just not going to work for us. Fothering them long. If this gets, yeah, Celtic win the ball. Burt running wide looking for Tavernier. Loses out. And Sinclair now has got in behind Tavernier. Charging forward away past Billing. Through ball for Griffiths. Uh, Fotheringham comes out to get it. Yeah, it's not looking great at the moment. Can we get a chance from here? Holgate looking for Burt, dropping a bit deeper. Hansen, Burt again. Pinball there. Rudden now. Waghorn. Halliday has to be bursting a gut down that left wing, but he's not. Comes to Tavernier. Two men close him down. In the box, Rudden! And against the run of play, a goal for the 17 year old Zach Rudden. Only his second goal for the club. And he managed to just take his chance there. In between the two central defenders. He gambles on it. And the ball is just... I don't know honestly what Kimpembe, I think, was. No, Toure there was doing um, ball watching. And um, do you know what? I think I'm going to go control now. Now that we've got the goal, um, we'll see whether or not we can maybe hold on to it. Celtic now with a chance here right before half time. Griffiths, nope. I don't know if that was a shot or a cross. We're definitely being outplayed here, uh, possession wise, chances and so on, but we've, we've got the goal, so it's, it's something to hold on to here. Sinclair, though, will get in behind the defence, and that surely, nope, not a penalty. <sighs> Disappointing. Disappointing. We have to go back to attacking now. Um, I'm, I'm surprised that wasn't a penalty. To be honest, Sinclair getting in behind the defensive line. That was actually a decent challenge by Tavernier. And Mbarba there just taking his chance at the back post. Halliday not tracking his man. And Celtic probably getting no less than he deserved there uh, with the equaliser before half time. And now will Griffiths get through? He does against three central defenders, he's getting that chance. And fathering him, making a meal of that. Not the greatest end to the first half. If we'd managed to go in at 1-0, I would have been pretty happy with that. And that looks as though it'll be half-time from there. Well and truly been outplayed. Jamie Hansen, 6.4. can see the nerves here, though. And everyone in midfield there is a young midfield. Um, so let's just see if we can give a little bit of encouragement, particularly to that midfield. Um... Yeah, just trying to think if there's anything we can do to help them out. I mean, they've already got three players. I can't really put any more unless I'm going to put someone in the defensive position there. But it's, I just don't want to to really sort of admit defeat in that sense. Um, I mean, the only other thing I can really do is, is look to bring on Matt Crooks, maybe for Hansen. I think that's probably what I'll do. Crooks is in good spirits and we'll just end up with two ball winning midfielders to try and stop them in the middle of the park um, a little bit better than the Scottish Cup I suppose but we're still we're still level and um, I suppose there's every chance we could nick it if we can get another goal like Ruddens um, let's just have a look at what we have here we are doing whipped crosses I'm going to go a little bit more direct now. Um, Fotheringham here taking the free kick. Looking for Waghorn. Loses out to Turi. And Barber now over the top. Kiernan gives it away. Burt wins it back from McGregor. Surely we go wide. Tavernier was in acres of space. But we found Rudden. And you're not going to score from there, Zach. That's something you have to learn. Um, I don't think that was the chance. Might be Celtic from here looking for Griffiths. Kiernan wins it. Sinclair now. Yep. Not managing to win the ball back well enough. Wilson cutting out that ball forward. Burt. Crooks giving it away. Sloppy again. And Griffiths will get the chance surely here. It'll be slipped through. Or no, nope, Sinclair's gone alone. Probably the wrong choice from him there, luckily for us. Um, so, right, 60 minutes. I mean, to be honest, there's not really much more I can do. Um, well, there's a lot of things I can do, but I'm, I'm not prepared to do it. Waghorn's playing 6.3 today. He's going to lose out to Turi again. Bert, go wide. 
It is wide. Tavernier whips it in early, looking for Waghorn. Is in. Who scored? Was it Waghorn? Nope. Herrera and the goalkeeper puts it into his own net. And uh, we're back in front with a rather fortuitous goal. Burt playing it wide, the early cross from Tavernier. Not the greatest cross in the world, but four players going in for that ball there. The confusion rains down and we're back in front with <laughs> hardly any shots at goal. Really, really lucky at the moment. Um, just look at the nerves. Uh, is there anything I can do? Uh, what's the right tone for this cam? Concentrate. Uh, encourage. Calm down, maybe. Maybe calm down. I don't know. Don't know if these work. Now, Celtic have changed their formation here. You can see that they're going for it more. So what I'm going to do to counter that is I'm going to bring Crooks back into the defensive midfielder position if I can actually get into change my tactics. So I'm going to bring Crooks back here to work against that. Obviously, with the formation they're going with, it gives us a little bit more space going forward. Um, no, <laughs> I was tempted to push the two wing backs there and kind of play a, a 3 1 4 2. Um, I think I'll probably go with that. I'm actually going to pull Waghorn back into that um, attacking midfielder kind of position um, and maybe kind of rein things in a little bit, maybe go control. I always feel a little bit reluctant to go more defensive in terms of mentality when you get yourself in front because, you know, the old adage, the best form of defence is attack. Um, certainly for us, it's not at the moment. Celtic will feel really aggrieved here. We've just got to hold out a couple of minutes here. Guillermo now trying to get a chance. Holgate with a great challenge. Now, can we launch this forward and get another chance? No, Billing puts it off. I don't believe it. I don't believe it that's gutting absolutely gutting if Billing had managed to play that ball up the park we might have had a chance in the counter plays it off the Celtic player comes into Guillermo first time shot in at the near post good finish from him and again as I say from from the stats point of view I can't really complain too much um, and this will surely be the full time whistle here unless we get a chance if we get the ball into the box Waghorn nope to all so in terms of progress it's our first game we haven't lost against Celtic this year um, it was unlucky that we didn't win it but um, you can see here a lot of what's coming out of this squad at the moment is just nerves um, it's too young a team we really need to get someone in who is going to be a, a, a steadier really someone that's going to steady the ship in the mid, midfield area um, Anyway, guys, how does that leave us in the league? Uh, still 20 points, now 14 points behind Hearts with only 10 games to go. So we need to claw back 50% of the points. I don't think it's going to happen. I think it probably will be a third place finish for us for six points clear of Dundee now. Um, what we do in terms of the next game, I think because we had two against Celtic here, the next one will probably be against Hearts after the split. Um is that will probably be a six pointer um, yeah I'm a little bit disappointed with these last two games it shows that we've still got a long way to go to, to overthrow Celtic so the work will begin to try and find the signings in the summer that are going to help turn around next season anyway guys hope you've enjoyed this double uh, game episode if you have please leave a like and leave any comments you can slate me for my formation or for the fact that Celtic just outplayed us in both games but until the next time, guys, I'll see you when I see you.